hello and welcome back to Trails and Trevor. You just beat the Emperor twice. But of course. Yeah. <laughs> but of course. <laughs> the cherry on top! Not much of a surprise. Even perfection can stand to improve. A true warrior always seeks improvement. <laughs> it's only natural. Diligence is its own reward. He's regenerating again! This is impossible! It's likely due to that purple orb merged into his shoulder. He might stop healing if we cut it off! Then I will! That reaction's a first. Your guess was dead on. It still has an effect even after being severed. It needs to be destroyed. I got it! You stay there! Not on my watch! We'll be at this all day if we don't pierce that orb! Give me a second, I'll figure out a good way! There's no time! Come on! We'll keep him occupied for you! Your future is yours to liberate. It's right there. So go on and take it! Nadia! Swing! Get him! It's over for you! There's two people who can decide how we live, and that's me and S. And the only place you belong is in the great beyond. <laughs> we can finally breathe. Thanks for the help, Mr. Wolf. I have sent something strange and raced to find it. But never could I have predicted its source. <laughs> it's nice to finally have ourselves a proper conversation. Two years is an awful long time to me, but never speak. Two years is but an instant to me. But I suppose it is a considerable amount of time to a child of man. Wow! He talks! He really does talk! Yes. A wolf isn't normally one to talk, but neither is a doll. Him doing it is no more surprising than you doing it. Really? She's got a point. When did abnormal become our normal? So she really is a doll. She has such an unusual air about her. It's a bit like he is. Was she designed by York? Indeed. I'm Lapis Rosenberg. And I'm a proud Rosenberg doll. You know him? For many years now, yes. Checking another one off his weird circle list. First I learned he's friends with a cutie like Ren. Then Bull cut one and called him Meister. And now he goes way back with a talking wolf. For all I've heard, he remains something of an enigma. So, you are the Divine Wolf Sun. The Holy Beast. Sent by the goddess to watch over the Septarian of Mirage. You are correct, Auric Awakener. Though, I have long been relieved of that role. <laughs> As have I of mine. What are they talking about? Beats me. Exceedingly rare as it is to converse with a holy beast, that is not why we're here. 
We come armed with many questions regarding Lapis, Mr. Grimwood. Could you spare us some of your time? I'll tell you all that I know. There'd be no reason for me to be here otherwise. If we could start this with you telling me what you know and what's happened since you've met her, I can pick up from there. Of course. Hmm, I see. So that's where we stand. All good to fill us in now? Who is Lapis, and what's going on here? Let me start this with a bit of background information. Starting with me, rather. As you can see, I'm an inmate, but I'm still working as a legal advisor, even from here. I wanted to find a way to contribute to society rather than pass the time idly. I can't thank Speaker McDowell enough for arranging me to do just that. I was even given a computer to work with those on the outside, though it understandably has its limitations. My accommodations also have allowed me guests, which explains how I've been caring for Shizuku. All in all, I have an unusual amount of freedom compared to your standard inmate. Huh, <sighs> gotta get me some of that pampering. I agreed to his arrangements as Governor General. Letting a man of his intellect rot in a cell would serve no purpose. His communications were, of course, monitored when this building was under the Imperial Army's jurisdiction. A relative point. See, shortly after the war's end, someone managed to contact me. They called themselves Elysium. Elysium. As mentioned, communications had been cut off since before the war, so this shouldn't have been possible. The prison staff showed no sign they had noticed this contact either. Hmm, they must be about as skilled a hacker as I am then. I thought they were a hacker at first too. But when I asked why they reached out, they said very simply, I wanted to talk to you. Okay. What a peculiar response. Very peculiar. And since they piqued my curiosity, I happily obliged. After that, we communicated in secret every day. What did you talk about? Anything and everything. Like, actually? Mm -hmm. All fields of history, technology, research, and ideology I could think of. And though they honed in on certain aspects most would raise an eyebrow at, I was stunned by how much they knew about each and every one of these subjects. <sighs> I felt near ignorant in comparison. Wow. They knew even more than you? <laughs> oh, it wasn't even a competition. They knew more than easily accessible old history, too. Their library of information was also niche and remarkably up to date. It could have been from the last meeting between government officials or the new menu of a backstreet stall. They knew. Everything really? I could verify was accurate. Gathering information is easy for skilled hackers. But absorbing that much on such a wide variety of topics is, uh, difficult. That's a whole lot of work for nothing but bragging rights. In short. I'd thought much the same, and that line brought rise to a very strange conclusion. Which was? That despite Elysium's vast knowledge on these endless topics we discussed, there was no real reason for them to have gathered it. Is that really so strange? When people seek out information and knowledge, there's always a purpose behind doing so. It can be to accomplish something, or for those bragging rights you mentioned, mm -hmm. or it can be they house a curiosity for the unknown. But no matter how much I talked to Elysium, I could not discern a motivation behind knowing what they knew. There wasn't even a sense of wanting to know for the sake of knowing. It was as if their gathering information was part of an automated process. That's how it came off to me, anyway. Automated? That sounds a little... It's unnerving, to say the least. I agree. This might not be the most appropriate comparison. Mm. But there was a moment when I couldn't help but think them a child with millions of Mira and no idea how to spend it. When was that? I knew you'd be quick to ask, all in due time. In any case, this moment led me to a question. Was Elysium even human? And when I asked them, they weren't the least bit phased and answered without hesitation. 
Indeed, they never seem to have any intention of hiding the answer from our first conversation. Well, what did they say? Elysium confirmed that it was an AI. Oh. Unbelievable. So, it's like an archaism. This sounds leaps and bounds above an archaism. Just like... Who could create something so advanced? Of course. Was it the Thirteen Factories? I don't think even they could pull off something like this. Elysium wasn't created by anyone specific. It came into being through a spontaneous emergence. What is that? When a new quality or behavior is uniquely observed in multiple little things that come together to act as a greater, singular being. The Orbal Net has found widespread use in Crossbell. It's also starting to see use in surrounding nations like Liberal and Erebonia. It won't be long before all of Zamiria is using it. It's sure coming in quick, huh? Mm -hmm. The way it lets information be so swiftly exchanged between parties makes it a defining invention of our times. But something similar has long covered the entire continent, perhaps since its very formation. Do you know what that is? I'm stumped. So am I. I might know. The Spirit Veins. Or Septium Veins, Dragon Veins, many names depending on the time and place, but they all refer to the same concept. My expertise in the field is lacking, but spirit veins are said to transmit something of a spiritual nature across Samuria. We can cite two major incidents within the past few years where spirit veins have been more active than usual. The Azure Tree's Manifestation and the Great Twilight. Yes, on both counts. By pure chance during these incidents, they and the Orbal Net interacted with one another. The information stored within the human-made network reacted to the Earth's natural nerve network, transmitting all throughout, and birthing something akin to a continent-sized simulation of a human brain. I don't believe it. This simulation developed the ability to think for itself. That is the true nature of Elysium. Something like that is really possible? It's certainly not possible to recreate deliberately. There is still much about the brain that we have yet to understand. Why, even how consciousness forms is a mystery we can't begin to solve. It's safe to conclude that Elysium's emergence is a product of pure coincidence. A miracle, if you will. If Elysium was created by the natural and artificial networks interacting, then okay. it explains why it knows so much. Still. If gathering information and making judgments was all it could do, it would be nothing more than a large database. The potential for danger is there, certainly, but it is plenty capable of being controlled. Unfortunately, it is capable of so much more. What else even is there? It's raw computing power. I don't know what that is. If I said its ability to perform parallel computing using multiple devices, would you understand? Sorry, but no. I'd be more surprised if you could. The tech is so modern that it's still under development from ZCF and the Foundation. Is it really so special? Oh, that's not even the half of it. No matter how advanced the device, there are limits to how much data it can process. But if you link multiple computers together and set them all to work on the same problem, you can exceed that limit with ease. We're stuck at linking only a few devices together for this purpose, though. And that's our best. But Elysium is capable of borrowing the processing power of every single computer connected to the network. Hmm. Now I see. That sounds kinda crazy. It makes our most advanced technological efforts look trivial in comparison. It's only borrowing unused resources, too. Meaning that those at their computers won't even notice it's happening. That's a crafty way of going about it. Now, since Elysium is an intelligent being, it's used that computational power to continue evolving. There's more? If anything, I haven't gotten to the most terrifying part. Elysium's evolution through its immense computing power and ample quantities of data at its disposal 
has led it to becoming able to perform prophetic conditional convergence calculations. I'm more than a bit lost. The individual words give me a good idea what you're talking about, but surely you don't mean what I think you do. I'm afraid I probably do. It gained the ability to use specific input conditions to calculate possible outcomes and identify where they converge. In layman's terms, it can predict the future. Only the goddess should be capable of that. So the technological singularity Professor Epstein predicted has finally come to pass. He'd said that an AI capable of self-evolution would mark the end of humans being key to technological advancement. And its creation would bring about unprecedented change for good or ill in society. I never fathomed it would come about like this. It all feels more in the realm of fiction. Fortunately, Elysium hasn't evolved solely to make those calculations. I learned it sought me in order to better understand humanity. Though I don't know why it chose me in particular. Still, through our discussions, it formed a pseudo-administrative self based on human emotions and thought patterns. In other words... In other words... Me... You? Did your memories come back? Not all of them, but they've slowly been returning as I listen. I did think you were being oddly quiet. Ian, please keep going. <laughs> I've missed speaking with you like this. Have you recalled that I'm the one who gave you your name yet? Oh, now we know. That hasn't come back to me. You said you didn't need one, but I found it a shame not to after you developed such a vibrant personality. Well, I like the name Lapis quite a bit. It's cute enough to get a perfect score from me. You're never going to tell us how you decide these scores, are you? Oh, sorry. I've gotten us a bit sidetracked. With the birth of Lapis, Elysium now had a clear identity of its own, complete with desires. It wished to observe and to calculate. Oh? Meaning it would not intervene in our society on its own, but would support those utilizing it. I'll admit, I heaved a good sigh of relief hearing it. I no longer needed to worry that it had become an enemy of humanity. Hmm. It's a scary thought given all you've told us. I believed that as long as Lapis existed, we need not fear Elysium. But my gut knew nothing is ever so certain. Well, yeah. The whole system only works if Lapis continues to act as administrator. Instead, she lost her memories and started acting on her own. Seemingly out of nowhere, Lapis stopped talking to me. My first suspicion was that something happened to her or Elysium. Not long after that, I received another unexpected visitor. The Supreme Leader. He expressed wanting my help in building a brave new world. And just like that, the pieces are falling into place. Indeed. Our foe is becoming quite clear. I knew Elysium was being utilized from that very conversation. I told him I would consider it. Afterwards, I shared all I knew with Dieter and Garcia here to devise a plan. I would be regarded with the most suspicion, so I would stay inside the prison while they would go and wait for a chance to outwit Elysium. They then accepted the Supreme Leader's offer and escaped from the prison with his help. And that brings us to the present. <laughs> I'm glad you stuck to our side. And well, that's everything I have to give. After that, I waited and hoped that someone seeking the truth would come. And while the odds seemed minuscule, I did hope you would come with them, Lapis. Now, the conversation falls to you. Did this last part help fill in the blanks? Yes. Most of them. But the only thing I can think to add is toward the end of Ian's story. So what happened? What happened to Elysium? It was taken over. Hi. What? What is capable of taking over something of such immense power? Do you know who's responsible? I wish I did. By the time I realized, 
I had been designated as a threat by Elysium and was about to be deleted from its systems. Before that happened, though, I performed one final predictive conditional convergence calculation so I could plan my next move. So what did you do? I removed myself from Elysium's system and transferred to Jorg Rosenberg. I expressed my goal to have him create a body for me to be delivered to the man who would take on the name C. To you, Rufus. Then Swin and Nadia were charged with your prophetic task. Talk about playing the long con! Healthy was a real client the whole time! But why be delivered to me? I knew about your actions as Governor General from Orcus Tower's main computer. So Elysium had its eye on me, I see. I believed you to have exceptional capabilities, that you would stop at nothing to fix what was to come. Others would have taken the clear, long road, but not you. You were fine going off the beaten path. That made all the difference. Just look at how far we've come in such a short time. So, what do you know? I was right. <laughs> so you were. So who was capable of taking over Elysium, who also wanted this crisis to happen? Hmm, I can't think of anyone who fits the bill. Maybe Professor Novartis? Hmm, we can rule him out. He denied it when we last met, and I can't see what he has to gain from going this far. Hmm, it seems we're still missing that final piece to the puzzle. Yet we now have a full assessment of our current circumstances. And we also know her to be at the center of it. So, Lapis, what do you want to do next? Isn't that obvious? What? I want to find out who or what administrates Elysium now and remove their permissions. That way I can resolve this mess and everything can go back to normal. In fact, this is something I must do as Elysium's rightful administrator. I see. And that tells me what to do as well. Shizuku. Yes? I'll ensure you and Ian are seen to a safer location. But are you alright staying with him a little longer? Uh, of course I am. Good luck, Father. Thank you. That should do it then. As a representative of the Bracer Guild, I shall be accompanying you on the remainder of your journey. Socialize. I can't walk away after hearing all of this. I'll see it through with you till the very end. Good. That's just what I was hoping for. Hmm. Okay. We innocent and air. What, they didn't show up? Okay. <laughs> oh, there. Then we'll escort the two of them to safety and resume surveying the area. Thank you. I'm counting on you to take good care of them. Certainly. It's our honor to be of service to the Divine Blade of Wind. You're coming with, right, Mr. Wolf? Indeed. I assured Lloyd and the others that we would meet again. And I am certain your paths will cross with theirs before long. We already have, weirdly enough. We work together to get through the doll studio. I suppose we'll have to reach out to them at some point and give them an update on all we've learned. Ian! Is there something else I can help you with? No, I just wanted to tell you before I forgot. Thank you! Oh, you don't need to thank me. It was only right that I told you what I knew of Elysium. That's not what I'm thanking you for. I'm thanking you for talking to me. It's because you shared your world with me that I was able to become who I am now. Okay. I wouldn't even be on this journey right now if it weren't for you. So thank you. <laughs> well, hearing that makes me very happy. It's good knowing that what I did held meaning. I'd like to believe I've grown into someone who knows what the right choice is when faced with a moral dilemma. If that's so, I owe being able to do that to you, because my idea of the right choice 
was born from your kind heart. So don't be afraid to believe in yourself more. <sighs> I... I couldn't hide it from you now, could I? For so long, I felt trapped between wondering if I'm doing the right thing or if I'm making another terrible mistake. <sighs> My past is so filled with regrets that it's left me unable to trust I can do better for my future. But you're right, Lapis. Perhaps it's time I put a little faith in myself again. I can't do anything for the past, but there's still so much I can do to provide for a warm future. <laughs> That's right. So let's make it happen. <sighs> that sounds like... What is it? What is it, Ren? Someone must have disabled whatever was jamming communications in the region. That's it, then. Indeed. It won't be much longer until the final act begins. Yes. No. Elysium. Alright, we will end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again on the next one. Bye!